Well, hello there, people. It is I, Captain Stephen. Today, Jams, I'm doing a bit of speculation around No Man's Skies. No, there isn't much news, really. Let's just jump into podcast mode. And, um, yeah, I talk about things that are on the Twitterverse. Then I talk about other sorts of things that I feel might be subtle hints as to what might be coming. Anyhow, here we go. So, over on to podcast mode. Now I'm over on the Twitter space. Some of you may not have Twitter, so some of you may not have seen Sean Murray's Twitter feed. But Sean Murray's Twitter feed, when it starts becoming active, that's when you start looking at it and thinking, are there any sort of subtle hints here? Now, you can see all the latest images up here from Sean Murray and what he's been retweeting out. And there does seem to be a slight pattern with things, especially these couple here and also the use of the exotic ship. But let's scroll down so we can see these images a little larger. So the first one that he's put out here, this was only an hour ago. Is some chappy standing off and looking into the distance and gazing at what might be over horizon. You've got this lovely cloud image again with this little guppy, which is quite nice. Now, clouds have been greatly improved. Do I come across planets that have clouds that, that look this great? I'm really not sure I do. I mean, at first when I saw it, I was like, is that a mod? That can't be No Man's Sky Clouds, but apparently it is. Very cool, a very nice, awesome image. Let's scroll on down a little further. I love this stuff. So this is all, I believe, stuff from Chris Foss or the images of Chris Foss. It looks very much like Chris Foss sort of artwork. So yeah, let's let's just click on these for a second. Stuart Crowley and Charles Herridge. I mean, that does look freaking. That does look very Chris Fossy type inspired artwork. If it's not Chris Foss, it looks very much like his art style. Beautiful though. You know, there's so much inspiration that came from this. I mean, look at that. That looks just like the actual entrances to stations right now. I am hoping that stations get a bit of an uplift and get changed up a little. I really do. Um, mainly because you see ships flying in through the ceiling and the floors in stations. You've also got the station core override that mentions about flight paths and it shows far more landing pads than what we've already got. So I'm wondering whether we might get an overhaul to the actual stations. And the stations have had a They've had at least one other rendition, haven't they? You know, we have now got abandoned stations that look like the old rendition. It has happened before, so it's not out of the realms of feasibility. Really like that. I really wish that we could actually blow up freighters in space. I mean, at the moment, yes, we can take out all of their guns and things, but we can't board them, we can't sort of hijack them, and we can't blow them to smithereens. I would like to be able to blow them to smithereens. I mean, at the moment, you see derelict freighters flying about in space and they're all smashed up and, you know, obliterated. But how did they get obliterated? You know, it would be nice to be able to do some of that obliterating. You know what I mean? Also, the ones that are crashed on planet surfaces, they seem to have shrunken somewhat, don't they? You know, it'd be nice to actually be able to go through the ones crashed on planet surfaces and actually do some proper salvaging. A bit like, you know, like in uh, Star Wars, where you see Rey going around and you know, roping down into them because they're huge. Well, freighters are huge. I mean, it's in the size of them compared to the ships, but for whatever reason, they've shrunk when they reach planet surfaces. Oddity, that one. Oddity. Yeah, I mean, look at that. That is pretty gnarly. They do need to increase space combat. They really do. It would be freaking excellent to have a little bit more immersive space combat what a, what a lovely lovely selection of images there and it does look like they did take inspiration from these so maybe hopefully they're going to revisit some of this now this is where the pattern comes in to some of the images that sean murray has been sharing out as of late this looks like some sort of generated city space now we know that they're working on the procedural engine and settlements does place parts and base parts in such a way that it creates a little mini settlement could it be that they might be working on procedural placement or maybe making cities you know is that a hint or am i jumping too far let us know in the comments whether you feel that it could be on the cards to have something like this procedurally generated and placed into actual iteration which would be pretty darn nice I mean, during GDC 2015, they did say that over every hill, it's you know, it's nice to think that you might be able to come across some sort of structures that pulls your interest that you want to go and visit and you know look at more. Well, at the moment, there's not really too much of that. But if they did add in procedurally generated technology sort of hubs or cities to almost make it look like a cyberpunk city, that'd be freaking insanely amazing. Could it be done in current gen, though? That's the question. That's the question. And you know what? 
And that brings us on to the next segment of where I'm going with all of this. And that is that although that next gen consoles seem to be all the rage, Hello Games haven't really focused their targets that way. I mean, they already have. We've already had the next gen update. We've already had the uplift from PlayStation 4 to PlayStation 5 in the way of graphical overhauls. And we had the, the Prisms update, which brought in a little bit of that light tracing type-esque feel and the AMD sort of graphical improvements. So we've already had our next gen uplift, if you like. But what Hello Games have set their sights on is now the Nintendo Switch stuffage. Now, there's something interesting about this trailer for Nintendo Switch. Now, I've muted it because, you know, the music's copyrighted. But let's make this full screen. I'm going to play you. I'm going to play you the trailer and see if you see anything odd about said trailer. So, uh, since there's no music, I may as well carry on talking mine tonight. Um, and I'll tell you what I think's a little bit odd about this trailer as it's actually playing itself out. I mean, all this stuff about every planet, every fish and every rock, we've had that on pretty much every other trailer going to date. Let me see if we can improve the graphical stuffage on this one. So there we go, let's put that to 1080. Lovely. Now it is nice that it's coming to a mobile platform. Now all other trailers that Hello Games have put out there always show other people in multiplayer. But when you look at this trailer, the only thing you see there is an exomech that seems to move on its own. Now, before the Sentinel update, Exomex didn't really do that, but now they do because they're AI pilot controlled. And when I saw this first trailer and I was speculating back then, I was like, has Nintendo Switch actually got multiplayer or are they going to allow it? So the actual mech helps you harvest things and acts almost like an NPC to serve the place of multiplayer. <laughs> a monolith still floating there did you see that yeah pretty funny so yeah bugs included nintendo switch players beware <laughs> cool, yeah. so yeah i don't think the nintendo switch version is going to have multiplayer but it is odd that they showed the nexus being called in there and also they show inside of a station but there's no additional landing pads inside of that station now, I'm wondering whether we're not going to see any sort of major changes to the game until the Switch version drops in the summer. So I'm wondering whether we might just get maybe a few more polish updates and maybe a couple of more expeditions and a few new things dropped into the Quicksilver sort of agent with one side of the Nexus. Other than that, I'm really, I would be surprised. I'd be surprised if anything major drops before the summer and before the Switch version. I think until the Switch version's out, we're not going to see too much actually hit the iteration that's going to be impactful or large, should I say. There we go, I'll just close that down. So yeah, that's my thoughts and feelings on what's going on, and that's my speculation. Apart from there's a little bit more. If I was to speculate what the next expedition would be, it's like I feel that the expeditions are playing out what an expedition would actually do in life. So the first one was the pioneers. So you'd set up, well, we haven't explored over to the eastern area of the world as yet. We're going to go that way. That's the pioneers. The next one, what was it? Was it cartographers or was it beachhead? I can never remember which one there was a second one, but it was one of them. So yeah, you would cartographers perhaps map it out and then you set up a beachhead. So once you actually land on the new area of world, actually, I think beachhead was the second one. So you set up a beachhead and then you set up the mapping of the area. And then the third one was emergence. So you might come across indigenous life or, or something that might push back against you being there or be inquisitive as to why you're there. The next one was exobiology. So that's all five that we've got right now. So, yeah, you're looking at what you can gain from the land in way of like harvesting, say, creatures and things and that sort of stuff. But the next thing you'd want to do is place down roots. So I would think that the next expedition is probably going to be centered around base building. Perhaps we won't be taken off from a planet. Perhaps we'll be looking for base parts and actually building a base upon a planet. Imagine that in an expedition where everybody is building bases upon a planet. I would like to hope that they give us a decent array of base parts if that's the case. And perhaps that's what these images are alluding to inside of actual, you know, Sean Murray's Twitter space. If the next expedition is all about throwing down base parts, technically we're going to be making some sort of giant city planet. The only thing I've got with a worry on that is at the moment on PlayStation 5, when I go visiting other people's bases, it's a miracle if they freaking all render. 
I know that they said in the next gen update and patch notes that more complex bases are now available for PlayStation 5. Well, for next gen is basically what they said, next gen, which includes the PlayStation 5. Base complexity for myself when I'm visiting other players' bases, they just don't render. Now, I don't see half of what I used to see on my PlayStation 4. So it's a massive step back, hence why I'm not doing base tools anymore on my PlayStation 5. Apart from my own bases, my own bases render fine. So I really don't know what's going on. It's very squiffy, it's very disjointed, and it hasn't been addressed or fixed since the uh, next-gen update. So, yeah, there is that. So uh, let's see. If they do throw something out there expedition-wise, which is about base building, it could be really darn fun. Um, but at the same point in time, I'm, I'm also thinking, is it going to have massive technical difficulties? But it would be cool if it does drop in a shed load of new base parts, which they could, couldn't they? So that's my thoughts and feelings. I'd love to hear your speculation. Of course, I'm not really placing this speculation on anything other than logical, rational thoughts and linking dots that probably don't exist. So yeah, I'd love to hear what you think. Please put it inside of the video comments. Yeah, brilliant. Until next time, people, take care. And um, I'm going to be signing off now. So cheery bye.